Hey everybody, it's Dan the Get School Dude once again with another Docker tutorial video. Today is actually going to be light on Git and heavy on Docker because we're going to show you how to develop software inside of a Docker container. Now I'm not just talking about testing a copy of your code like we did in the previous video on Docker. I'm talking about mounting your entire home directory and effectively letting you change your development platform to anything Docker supports, as long as you have Docker on your host machine, of course. I honestly feel like this is one of the most powerful features of Docker, so hopefully you'll find it useful as well. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we're gonna to be using the Hello World repo. You can clone it down through here. I can flip over and show you. This project is on gitlab.com. You can find it under this URL if you wanna clone and mess around with the repo. And today we're actually going to be building on content introduced in previous videos. So this two-part series, Introduction to Docker and GitLab Registry Part 1 and 2, that's where we actually created uh, a Docker image for the CentOS 6 platform, and then we pushed it to the Docker registry so that our GitLab CI job could test with that platform. Well, today we're going to slightly modify that image so that we can use the exact same image, but in a more useful way. If you've seen my videos before, you'll know that the Hello World repo is very simple. Make will build, make clean will clean, and you can run the program by running dot slash hello. So right now we're off origin master, and if we were to have a look at the make file and the docker file that we created in the last docker video series, just to give you a quick recap, this make file is just a shortcut to some of the docker build and docker run functionality that we'd set up, and the docker file describes the image itself. So it's based on CentOS 6.8. We've installed a few packages that we need to build, and uh, this section actually uh, copies the content of this repo into a location called slash apps on the image so that we can build and run. This is the naive approach to get the code into the image. And it can be useful for certain testing situations, but it's not useful at all for software development. So that's what we're going to address today. So if I run make run CentOS 6, it's a shortcut to running the container that we've defined in that Docker file, which has a prerequisite of the build. So all I have to do is run this, and it will build the container if necessary, and then drop me as root into an instance of the container. So you can see that I am root, and we have the GCC version associated with the CentOS 6.8 final version that we have inside the container. If I go to slash apps, you can see the copy of the code that was copied in here. So this is that naive copy that I'd mentioned in uh, the Docker file. This is where it ends up in slash apps under the container image. So how useful is this to us? Do we really want to rebuild an image every time we want to test? So let's go ahead and make this a little more useful. Hold on while I change the code. All right, I'm done. There was no editing. That's actually how fast I worked. Now let's take a look at what I did here. If we just diff what I got here with the branch that I'm on, we can see the changes that I've made. It's not a whole lot. On the docker build command, we add a build argument, which is called my user, and it is set to the user of whoever runs this command when the docker image is built. And we've added a lot of stuff to the run command. So we still have the previous run CentOS 6 command. This will spawn the image in the way we just did earlier. We have a new target that will spawn a docker run command with a whole bunch of extra uh, mounting of volumes, setting up. So for example, this sets the home directory to be the same inside and outside of the container. This mounts the actual volume of your home directory. This Etsy group and password stuff will make it so that your UID, GID, and permissions are all fine. Uh, the security opt isn't strictly necessary, but I use it for uh, GDB. I won't get too much into that. And uh, we set the display and some X11 mechanisms so we can actually spawn GUIs from inside the Docker container. And then, of course, this dash U is also related to the um, UID and the permissions. And the last line, of course, is just the image to spawn. So in the Docker file, we only had to change a couple things. We specify that there is an argument to this build command, and that argument is called my user. When the Docker build command is issued, this variable will be defined. And this add user literally just adds this user inside the image itself. 
So with that, now we can run the Docker container in another way. And let me show you what happens. OK, check this out. So I am Dan. I am inside a Docker container. If I flip over to the other terminal and do a Docker PS, you can see that we have the same image running, a bash shell. This is the container ID. If I flip back into the console, so check this out, host name. Yeah, so this is the container identifier, as you can see on the host where I do Docker PS. This matches the host name inside the container. But more importantly, I am my user and I can get to my home directory. Slash home slash Dan has been mounted from the host to inside the container, which means I can go to any project I have, and in this case, hello, which is actually mounted from my host and work. Now I can do make clean, I can do make, I can run, and you can see that even though my host is Ubuntu, the image is providing me a CentOS 6.8 image, which is identical to the image that our GitLab CI testing is using, which we set up in the previous video Docker series. So this means I can literally, inside the container, open the code, change it. I can type git status inside the container. I see the changes. I can git add. I can commit. I'm not going to actually commit. But I can make. I can run. I can do everything I need to do for software development inside the container. OK, guys, I paused for a second because I realized that this is very difficult uh, to tell when I'm in a container versus not within a container. So I went ahead and changed my prompt so it'll show up purple if I'm inside a container, and it'll show up blue when I'm on the host, just so it's easier to, for you guys to tell what's going on here. So I'd mentioned this before, but I, it's, it's crucial to understand that what we've done here with respect to creating this image, and the image is really no different. We just passed in. Uh, the username parameters and a bunch of mounting options to the run command but anyway the image that we've created here we can now develop in work in locally inside the container do our development do everything exactly on the same platform that our testing system is doing it in. so this is on in the project in the GitLab CI job section if you go and you click on these guys you can see that in a previous video we'd actually set it up to use this exact same docker image so this is crucial right so now your developers can work directly in their repositories inside the container and therefore test identically to how GitLab CI will test so after all of this, you may say, well, this is great, but we don't all use a terminal in Vim like Dan the Git School Dude does. So how am I supposed to use my GUI development tools? So maybe use Emacs, Eclipse, PyCharm, Sublime, whatever tool that you like the best, you should still be able to use within this platform. So you basically have two options, right? You can edit your code on the host, like over here. So for example, I'm on the host here. Let's say instead of Vim, use GVim which is really just Vim, but, and I can bring up GVim in its own terminal, and if I run cat etsy red hat release, you can see no such file or directory, because I'm on Ubuntu. But there's no reason I can't, for example, GVim all my source code, bring it up in this window. If I prefer using a GUI, I can do that. I'm on the host, there's no reason why I can't. And then when I'm ready, I can switch over to inside the image to actually do the building and the running to do the test. So that's one way to do it. If you have the tools you need inside the container, so for example, if you look in the Docker file, of course, we can yum install anything we want from the CentOS 6.8 perspective. So you could actually use GUIs. And I'd actually added these lines here to show you that based on the way we're mounting the X11 socket mechanism, we can actually spawn GUIs from inside the container. So I'm in the container right now, as you can see. And I can type X clock because we've installed it. And you can see, let me drag it over here. You can see that it spawned a GUI window. Now, if you didn't have, let me close this down. If you didn't have the mounting options in the make file here, so if you look at this, 
if you didn't have this line or this line or this line which tells the host to allow Docker uh, access to the X11 mechanism, then you would get an error about not able to have the display. But so I've set it up this way so that you could spawn GUI. So for example, now, you know, before we spawn GVim on the host over here, no problem. Well, if I flip over the container, I can do the exact same thing because we've installed GVim on the container. I can bring it up over here and you can see that if I do cat Etsy Red Hat release, this GVim version is running inside of our 6.8 container and X windows are forwarded to our local display on the host. One more thing that's important to point out here uh, is that what we're doing here where we mount the home directory through the docker run command, this is similar to the way GitLab CI's docker, uh, docker executor provides the repository inside the container when it's testing in GitLab CI. So in that case, Docker is actually running under the hood of the GitLab CI runner itself. So it appears to be magic to the user. The user doesn't really have to worry about how the repo gets inside the image. It clones it to a local workspace and then mounts that location so that the image in GitLab CI can run the code on the branch state uh, that you specify in your GitLab CI YAML configuration. For completeness, I'll go ahead and push this Docker image to the GitLab registry for the project. Hopefully the content in this video will let you work effectively inside and or outside Docker containers as you please. Do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. I'm Dan the Git School Dude and I'll see you guys next time.